Hi there, and welcome to The Next Right Thing for the Catholic Life. I'm Debbie Giorgiani with Adam Bly. We are the hosts of The Spirit World, heard right here on Saturdays on Guadalupe Radio Network. But on Morning Joy, where truth matters, uh, we have this wonderful segment called The Next Right Thing, where we try to do the next right thing in our daily lives. And we bring on guests to help us with that. And a favorite of ours is Father Cedric Pazania. He's an author, speaker, TV host, a passionist priest, and you, you've heard him on, I'm sure you've seen him on EWTN. So welcome, Father Cedric. We are going to be talking about peace, but I'm going to turn it over to Adam to just remind our listeners of how this show, Morning Joy, is focused all around the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Deb. So as we talked about in our last segment on joy, we are talking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is Catechism 1832, if you want to look it up. And just remember, these are fruits that grow in us and develop over time as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, as we deepen our relationship with God. And so here's all the fruits, and we're going to be talking about peace, but let's get that context. Here's them all. Charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. And that's a lot there, and that's why I think it's it's great, Deb, that we break them down into individual pieces, because Father helped us so much in our segment on joy to mm-hmm. kind of get practical about how we can bring more joy into our life. Well, and, and Father Cedric is the author of 25 books, an amazing um, speaker and TV host. So Father Cedric, tell us, uh, for the next right thing, remember, that's our segment, the next right thing of what we can do in our daily lives each and every day about peace. Well, I thank you so much for having me on once again, and I welcome all of your listeners, and I pray peace to you. Shalom. That was Jesus' first gift at the resurrection, if you remember, he said shalom, which means harmony, but it also means tranquility and serenity. And people everywhere need peace because we live in a world, as you know, with traffic and inflation and stress and neighbors and road rage and politics. Uh, I've never seen the country so divided. And then there's even polarization in our church about the Pope and There was Bishop Strickland of Tyler and what happened to him, and people are angry and upset and flustered and agitated. Peace be with you. And that is something that the church has always held up as something very, very important. For example, I'm a Catholic priest, as you know. I've been a priest now for 30 years or so. And at Mass, we talk about peace at every Eucharist. After the Our Father, there's something called the embolism, where we say, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress. And people everywhere are distressed. So it is the help of God that does that, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And then Lord Jesus Christ, at the sign of the peace, we say, Lord Jesus Christ, you said, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, graciously grant us peace. And then we actually give each other the sign of peace. So let me say a few words right now to your listeners serenity, calm, tranquility, quiet, rest, state of well-being, whatever you're going through right now, the risen Lord says shalom to you, peace. Peace be with you in the midst of your trials and tribulations. Peace is power. Peace is grace. Peace, Peace is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's beautiful, Father. So, you know, when we were talking about joy, we kind of were talking about our thoughts and how our attitude shapes our reaction to life's trials. And when you're talking about peace there, I'm more feeling drawn to kind of the the underlying kind of relationship, realization of God's presence, His providence in our life, and kind of more of an emotion is is what I'm connecting with as you're saying that 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 peaceful emotion when we when we maybe shake hands and look the person in their eyes and say peace be with you and that sense of connection you know Jesus did it for the people that were there with the apostles when he was in person 
and we can then give that to each other and hopefully the Holy Spirit in us helps to give some of that peace to the other. All of this to say, Father, it seems like it's about relationship here and that peace that comes through healthy relationships that are hopefully supported by the Holy Spirit and, you know, on both sides and both parties or even in a group. Do you, do you have any thoughts or reactions to that idea of relationship and peace? I have a lot of thoughts about that <laughs> because you're exactly right. Peace doesn't happen in a vacuum. We're always in the midst of our circumstances and relationships. Mm. And let me talk about the 12-step program. In the 12-step program that has to do with people that are in recovery, there's a whole branch of the 12-step program called Al-Anon. And Al-Anon is for spouses and relatives of alcoholics or whatever people are addicted to. Because what happens is if you live in a family where there's an an addiction, you get infected by that disease. That's actually what the 12-step program teaches. And so it can drive you crazy and there's like no peace and you have to try to find peace. And there's that beautiful prayer by Reinhold Niebuhr. I know you've heard it. It's called the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. So we're talking about serenity here. We're talking about peace. You actually have to pray for serenity. Don't just let your relationships drive you crazy. I live in religious life and I live with six other priests and in a wider context of many priests and laity. And some of the people I get along with so easily and they're so nice and everything, other people, they're drab and down and they, they're negative. And I have to pray that prayer. I have to pray, God, grant me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I think life in general is about accepting things. Now, I I stress, I'm a very proactive priest. I stress the courage to change things and even people when the time is right. So don't get me wrong here, but a lot of life is about acceptance. I, I'll give you an example. My dad was in the Second World War, and he's, he was a disabled veteran. He had a piece of metal fly into one of his eyes, believe it or not, and it seared his pupil shut. And he was blind in his right eye for the rest of his life. And he was a carpenter, and he did it with one eye, and I worked with him. He was a master craftsman. And I was so proud of my dad because he accepted what happened to him. He never complained about it. And Debbie, do we have a little more time I can share something? We do, Father. You go right ahead. Okay. So in the big book, which is Alcoholics Anonymous' Bible, it's called the big book, there's a prose called Acceptance is the Answer. And it goes like this. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I'm disturbed, it's because I find some person, place, or thing, or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me. I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, or thing, or situation as being exactly the way it's supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in this world by mistake. I need to concentrate on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. And I think that's so good because in the 12-step program, they use that prose about people and about addictions and about situations and I think as believers we need to also because there's we are not in control of our life totally and there are so many things that come into our life that we have it could be a noisy neighbor it could be traffic it could be a relationship problem and it can destroy our peace and I want to talk about how peace is power and we don't want to give our peace away and that's what Jesus said he said don't let your hearts be troubled he said you believe in me trust in me don't let your hearts be troubled. So we are responsible, really, <laughs> for our own serenity and peace with God's help. Mm-hmm. You know, Father Cedric, I wanted to share with you, I think our listeners probably know this about me already because they listen probably to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie and also the spirit world. Um, I'm a two, two-time two cancer survivor, thriver. And, um, wow. you know, when yeah, when you get through cancer twice, you really yeah. learn how to practice peace because it's not worth I'll it. Bet. It's It'll make you wow. sick, if, Father, if you can't keep that peace, right? If you can't keep it, it'll make you, um, it, it causes disease. 
you know, and it really does, it can hurt, it can hurt you um, physically and mentally and emotionally. And so I so agree with you. And, and there's a big difference with, you know, accepting things, you know, obviously we don't want to compromise in any way, shape or form when it comes to things that are uh, of, of God and not of God, right? We want to, we want to hold true to what is, what is uh, holy and good and pleasing to God, but we can accept um, what, where people's come from are, where, what they have traveled, what they have experienced, what they have lived through. I mean, there's, that's, that is a beautiful way to connect soul to soul and to heal and to repair the body of Christ, I think anyway. It's just, I learned that actually, Father, in the clinic one time with an IV stuck to my arm with uh, drugs mm, being poured wow. in for, for, uh, to treat cancer. And I, and I was talking to everybody in the clinic and I was like, wow, everybody really was, was Christ-like to each other. It was a quite beautiful experience. That's why sometimes people say cancer is a blessing because you learn so many things when you go through the, when you go through that uh, struggle. Well, I wanted to share with you that peace is power. And Adam, this is probably more your field, but the devil wants us to lose our peace. He's an agitator. He he hates us. Number one, uh, his number one strategy is to try to steal our soul. And he's doing that to a lot of people. That's for sure. He's stealing their soul. But his number two strategy is to make us miserable. <laughs> and he uses the the agitation, the events of our life, people in our life to really try to make us miserable. And when you lose your peace, you lose your power. It's it's uh, a sad thing. And I wanted to share with you that although there's all kinds of tribulations in the world, I've found that you can be strong. Right by my bed, I have actually uh, taped to my wall, believe it or not, w the, from the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's sequin shoes. And you might be thinking, what? what? What are you talking about? Well, if you remember in The Wizard of Oz, she wore these shoes, and these shoes were that which was going to take her home, these sequin-colored shoes, these beautiful ruby red slippers. And if you remember, the Wicked Witch of the West wanted those shoes, and she did everything she could to get those shoes. And at one time, she was actually trying to take those shoes off, and if you remember, she tried to take them off, she got zapped and she wasn't able to take the shoes off. The only way that the shoes could be taken off was if Dorothy took those shoes off. And if you remember in the letter to the Ephesians, we are told that we have weapons of our warfare and the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of faith and the shoes of peace. And we are responsible for keeping those shoes on the devil the evil one wants to make us miserable, and he does everything to get those shoes off, and only we can take them off. And I put those shoes by my bed to remind me that no matter what happens during the course of my day, don't take off the shoes of peace, because with peace, there is power. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Father. Um, and what you say, it reminds me, you know, I've worked with so many people over the years that are that are kind of going through the process of getting exorcisms and getting disentangled from the demonic. A big thing that I've seen that the devil, his demons try to do is to get us to despair of God's love, to stop trusting in him, to get so aggravated with the world and our circumstances and our suffering that we say, you know, well, God must not love me or God isn't watching, he doesn't care. The devil needs us to take our eyes off of God first before he can propose his own twisted solution to things, which is going to be a deeper relationship with him, of course, in some form, veiled or not. But he needs to get us off of God and take God out of the center of our mind's eye and our spiritual life. And, and what you said about power is really interesting. I've never thought about it that way, but it's so true. Because if we let other people dictate how we feel, we're letting them run our life. We're le letting somebody else, or in the case of the devil, something else, decide how our life is going to go. And that's not what I think we're called to do or we're created to do. Um, and, you know, yeah, that's codependence and allowing others to, we're like a puppet on a string and... <clears throat> our happiness and, and peace is dependent on the way they are. We can't be yeah. that. 
we have to be our own person and we are responsible for our peace and our joy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, and the ultimate, you know, extreme form of that is, of course, <clears throat> possession when we've given over complete control to this other entity. And of course, the church then wants to rescue us from that circumstance. But the rest of the journey back in terms of the personal journey of the people that are struggling with that is to regain their trust in Christ, their relationship with Christ, their peace in Christ in spite of difficulties and not despair of that love. Mm -hmm. And I think that awareness of God's love in a very real sense comes from the Holy Spirit being in us where we have that internal sense of peace. And I guess in, in if we have time, Father, if you could touch on that, the internal peace that can come from meditating in silence, maybe at adoration, maybe it's on the scripture, maybe it's in prayer, but to get in touch with the Holy Spirit in us for that personal internal peace. Well, that's right. We have to guard our own heart for one thing. There are practical steps to get peace, and one of them is you don't just sit in front of the news all day, because if you do that, you're going to get all upset and agitated. But the bottom line is, is that as I keep harping, we are responsible for our own peace, and it comes from the Holy Spirit, but we're still responsible by guarding our heart, for example, learning to laugh, being healthy, uh, exercising, having a good diet. But let me say this, that we are, sometimes I can be so reactive, and I overreact, and I'm trying to learn in my life to respond instead of react, whether it be traffic or people. Just don't let people pull your your strings, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I think about a hurricane, for example. When there's a hurricane going on and everything's churned up and everything's agitated, the wind is blowing, especially right over the ocean, just beneath the surface there's calm. And I want to say serenity and peace and calm and tranquility to all your listeners. Just go within. The, the spirit is there. People are always in a hurry, and I'm trying to tell myself, Cedric, slow down. Don't be in such a hurry. One time I was in a car, and one of our priests, passionist priests, was driving. He's a priest from India. We have imported a number of Indian priests now. And he was going really slow, and I'm a type A personality, and I like to go fast. I just want to get there. And he's going really slow, and cars are passing us, like, on the left and on the right. And I was getting agitated, and I looked at him, and I said, I said, why, why do you drive so slow? I didn't say it in a mean way, but I just said, how can you drive so slow? And he looks at me, and he said, you know, I used to be different. He said, I used to always drive really fast, and I let people push me around and go fast. And he said, I made the decision not to let people push my buttons, and I drive the way I want to drive. And he said, I've learned how to slow down. And I, I smiled and I said, can you teach me how to do that? <laughs> because I'll tell you, I'm, I'm always in such a hurry and yeah. just want to get there. And I react so much. And really, peace is about slowing down, right. being responsible, guarding your heart, not letting people pull your strings and push your buttons. And that's mm -hmm. the way Jesus is. And that's why he said, turn the other cheek. You don't have to overreact with people. Mm -hmm. He said, even if somebody hits you, you don't have to respond in kind. And that's why we call him master, because he was a master of his emotions. And that's one of the things that we need to learn. And it comes, Adam, as you were saying, from the Holy Spirit. Wow. Father Cedric Pesenia, we are so grateful to you that you are part of the Morning Joy team. Thank you so very, very much. We're going to catch you uh, again maybe later this week or next week on The Next Right Thing. Thank you. You can find more of Father Cedric's appearances and books at fathercedric.org. And Adam, I know that the Holy Spirit was behind us on this particular segment of the the next right thing, because I was actually going to say the exact same thing that Father Cedric said um, about uh, responding rather than reacting. So I just know the Holy Spirit's with us on this.